Welcome to my tutorial on how to use the schematic diagram symbols in Paint. Why Paint? Because Paint is available for free on every Windows machine. So it doesn't matter where you go, if it's got a computer and it's running Windows, you can put this these files on a flash drive and be able to create professional looking schematics pretty much anywhere. First thing that you want to do is download the files from Blackboard. So log into Blackboard normally, click on your class, and then come over here to the left hand side and choose your content folder. Within your contact folder you will see the schematic diagram project folder. Click on that. Here you'll find the description of the schematic diagram project, the grading rubrics for it, and then a file folder that contains the actual files that you're going to use. When you open that up you'll see three files, all version 2, which is the latest version. The first one is the analog schematic symbols. This contains most of the schematic symbols that you'll ever use uh, when designing a schematic diagram. The middle one is the basic stamp schematic symbols. And that one has symbols that are um, typically used when playing with the basic stamp. And then the last one is the digital schematic symbols, which contains um, all your gates and your pinouts for your digital components. Now, if you were just to click on the file, it will open up the file, but this file is in a picture viewer, and as you can see, the analog schematic symbols are as quite large, and if I click on it to get closer, you can see that it is uh, quite a large bitmap file. The problem is, is that we can't use it this way. So what we have to do is come back to the folder, you want to right click, you want to save link as, choose your folder that you're going to save it as, in this case I already have it set up, named it Analog Schematic Symbols version 2.0 and then hit save. And now as you can see here the actual file is downloading to my flash drive and this is where we're going to use it to open it up and actually be able to use it. Now that we've downloaded the files we need to open them up. So go ahead and open up the folder that contains the files. Now if we were to just left click and open up what will happen is, is we'll open up the file in a picture viewer and this doesn't do us any good. So what we need to do is left click once to select then right click to bring up the quick menu, choose open with, and then move over to paint. And what will happen is it will open up the file in paint, which allows us to manipulate it. Now we're not done. What we need to do is we need to open up a second paint file that's going to actually be the canvas in which we draw the schematic diagram. So paint is under start, choose all programs, go up to accessories and close to the top is paint and when I click on it it will open up a blank paint file and now we're ready to begin now that we got the two files open we can go ahead and start making our schematic diagram what we want to do is first go to the one that has all the symbols and scroll down until you find the symbol that you're looking for. Now these are in alphabetical order. What you want to make sure that you have is you choose to select so that we can select a particular symbol. Move your cursor over to the top left. Left click your left mouse button and highlight the symbol. Go ahead and hit copy. Switch over to your blank one and hit paste. And now we can go ahead and place it anywhere on the page. Now it doesn't matter where you start with because we can change the size of the page and move everything around. Let's go ahead and choose another symbol. And in this case here I'm going to look for a resistor. So I'm going to scroll down until I see a resistor. And there we go. Up top left, left click hold. I can also use the quick menu, moving the mouse over the symbol, 
hit right click copy and then choose the blank page and hit paste now a word about pasting when we place paste things in the second file what we want to make sure is that under the select tool we have transparent selection checked off here's the difference with transparent selections chosen what will happen is is the symbol that I brought over we can see through it through the background now if I uncheck transparent selection what will happen is it grabs the background color and as you can see I'm starting to erase or cover up the other schematic symbols so we don't want that so always make sure that once we start copying and pasting that you have chosen transparent selection let's go ahead and put another symbol down and I did a resistor let's go ahead and put up let's say a transistor here so I'll put it or in this case a JFET left click hold select copy come over here and hit paste and there we go now that we've placed the components it's time to connect them together now on the screen here you can see our symbols are kind of small so what we want to do is zoom in and right here this button here is the magnifier and it allows us to go ahead and zoom in and I'll zoom in twice now we can go ahead and connect the lines. I'm going to come over here and choose the line tool. Then choose our size, which will be the second one down, or 3px or 3 pixels. Position the cursor at the point I want the line to start. Left click and hold. Now as I move the mouse, you'll see that the line doesn't stay straight. And that can become a problem because now a non straight line doesn't look professional well paint has a way of making the line stay straight so we'll start here left click and hold and then I'll hold down the shift key and even though you can see my mouse moving from side to side the line is staying straight basically the shift key allows the line to be placed on the closest 45 degree mark so I can move it rotate it around and it will still stay straight to where I put the 45 degrees. Now you can continue to put your lines on this way, but the problem is, is that you won't always get it on center. So if I do this line here, hold shift, even though I'm holding the shift key down and it's straight, you can see right here that this isn't a perfect match. Now the easiest way to do this is to go ahead and use our select tool and the copy tool. What you can do is go ahead and draw a vertical and a horizontal line off away from the schematic diagram. Choose Select. Come over here and go ahead and highlight your line. Now there's a quick way of copying whatever you have highlighted. And that's just holding down the Control key. So now that I have it highlighted, I hold down Control and then left click. And now I've got a copy of what I had highlighted. I'm going to go ahead and move it over here and match it up however I need to. Since it's not quite making it to the next line, I'll hold Control down again and make another line. And in this way, we can quickly highlight, hold Control, left click, move it to the position that we need it, highlight, left click, Control, and I can line all my lines up quickly and easily even if they're too tiny I can still continue to copy it alright so now that we've gone ahead and found a quick way of drawing our lines we have these lines that weren't perfect so what we can do is we can choose the erase tool so right here is the erase tool left click on it come over to where I want to start erasing click the left mouse button and go ahead and hold it while moving and this way I can erase what didn't work out very well 
And of course, I can come back over here, highlight, hold control, and draw my lines. And this also works out well when you're crossing the lines over and you want to clean that up. Click over here and erase any overhang. Now that we have the components placed and lines connecting them, it's time to go ahead and label them. What you want to do is come up here and choose the text tool. And the easiest way to do this is somewhere away from the schematic, left click and hold to create a text window and go ahead and type out the text that you want. Trying to put a text window by the component can sometimes erase it or a part of it or it won't be in this correct placement so you're going to end up having to use the select tool and move it anyhow but this way you won't erase anything so just select it and move it to place again left click the text tool open up a little window now we can change the size and shape and the type of lettering that it is as well. So it's up to you. Just make sure that when you do choose the text that you're going to use, that when this schematic gets printed out, that it's able to be read. As, as it stands right now, this probably wouldn't be very read very well. Now that we've completed our schematic diagram, we can go ahead and embed it in a Word document. Make sure that the Select tool is selected. Position your cursor above the top left. Left click and hold to highlight the entire schematic. Go ahead and hit Copy. Click over to your Word document and hit Paste. What will happen is that your drawing will now be embedded as a picture, so you can manipulate the schematic like you would do any other picture by resizing it and centering it. Thank you for watching this video.